Christ, in the name of Jesus. Forever thanking the Lord for what he's done for us at the tree. He's changed life for, forever for all who believe and walk in obedience to the doctrine of Christ. We're going to be reading out of Philippians today and we're going forward with um, 2023, the year of misery. We finished the M on misery and now we're into the I in the word misery or deconstructing the word misery. We have had more than enough proof of the prophecy within the first three weeks of the first month of 2023. So we're going to start reading in Philippians 3. Verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I am also circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. <clears throat> of the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet, indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ, be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is from, but, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness <coughs> which is from God by faith. Philippians three ten, that I may know Him in the power of His resurrection. Fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Wow, what a banquet there. He brought me into the banqueting house. Just 11, 11 verses and uh, jam packed. Definitely jam packed. Gems bulging out of those 11 verses. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Um, as I said earlier, we're in the eye today, in misery. The eye is for inferior. The world is inferior uh, to 
to God, to his message. The things of the world, they grow strangely dim in the light of his glory. They grow strangely dim uh, in the um, presence of his promises. in the weight of his greatness. So, uh, as we've been saying, that people choose the misery. People choose the inferior. That's part of the, the madness of sin. Choosing the inferior. Why would you choose the lesser item Right? when we should be picking the best, select the best. Now here we have Paul. He's talking about giving all for Christ because that's where the value lies. All for Christ. He obviously has said this before. According to verse 1, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is so. Rejoice in the Lord. Paul was always good to say, Rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in the Lord. Even in the next chapter, Chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. That's where we uh, get our joy from. In the Lord. And we rejoice in Him. Then we won't lack joy. But we will let joy if we're relying on things to bring us the joy. Are you relying on people? Are you relying on things to bring you the joy? It's going to be a roller coaster ride. Right? It's up and down, up and down. But always, always rejoice in the Lord. Right? Make sure he's your joy. Make sure he's your peace. I won't be at peace till this happens. I won't be at peace till that happens. Until this is done. See? That's not rejoicing in the Lord. You're wanting and waiting for something else to be done. You're restricting yourself. That's the world. Their ways are inferior. Right? Their ways are inferior. They're not up to the Lord's standard. They have holes in them. They don't hold water. What the world says will bring you peace. It's only temporary. You have this insurance policy, or you have a lot of friends, or you're in a certain club, in the Buffalo Club, or you, you know. You have this membership, or everything's going to run smoothly. But uh, it's not first class living. First class living is picking up your cross each day. That's first class living. The world has a totally different idea of first-class living. <coughs> uh, 
<coughs> Glory to the Lamb. Paul says here, Philippians 3, 2, Beware of dogs, evil workers, and, and the mutilation. <coughs> Remembering the dogs are outside the house. The evil workers. We we got to be on guard because we don't want want anyone to rob us of this wonderful uh, way, this wonderful teaching of Jesus. Trying to put down. People out there trying to put down what Jesus said and uh, accentuate other teachings and, and mere men's teachings that are inferior to the Lord. We're so blessed. We're so blessed to have this um, teaching of the Christ. It's foolproof. It's, it, it's waterproof. There's no holes. You go back to the days of Noah and, 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 and the ark, as it was in the days of Noah. This, this was a, a huge vessel, a huge boat built by this one man who wasn't a a craftsman uh, in in boat building. He just followed the instructions of the Lord. Now, this is what we do. We follow the instructions of the Lord. As Paul said here in Philippians 3, one, Find my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. He's writing. Right? He's writing, he's instructing. And uh, the the way of the Lord um, will land us uh, safe and sound. There is a safe place. <laughs> In the Lord, right? the, the Lord wanted everyone to get on the boat in the days of Noah, but only seven got on, plus the driver, which is uh, Noah, but Noah and his family, the only ones. But he wanted them all to get on. The animals got on two by two. Right? And so let me say that we're not uh, we're not bogged down with the inferior. We're rejoicing in, in, in the uttermost. Paul makes it clear here. You can't get any greater. Philippians 3. Verse 3. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus. Have no confidence in the flesh. See, Paul's gone a step further here. Past the world... And he's gone into religion. See, Judaism. And he's saying how inferior that is to the way of the Lord. Nothing beats faith's faith in the Son of God. Okay. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit. Rejoice 
in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. And a lot of these Bible college graduates, their confidence is in the flesh and in, in the intellect. Philippians 3, 4. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh. And then he explains. If anyone thinks he, he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. And then he tells them why. Explains the situation. Verse 5. Philippians 3, 5. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law of Phar- the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. You can't get any better than that, Paul says. So, Paul, who was Saul, was top of the heap in the religious realm. He was he was inferior to no one in the religious realm, but he was inferior to the way of the Lord, the way of Jesus, until he locked in, until he surrendered. And then uh, he joined the I'm Not Inferior Club to anything or anyone in the world. In verse 7, Philippians 3. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. He knew he couldn't hang on to the old and then lay hold of the new. And the Galatians thought they could They started off in the spirit and ended up in the flesh, didn't they? Philippians 3, 8. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the essence of the knowledge of the Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ see there's the inferior part he counts it all rubbish the world all things all things Paul counted all things as rubbish. Some versions say dung, D-U-N-G. Kermenu, he counted it all. All things that he may gain Christ. There's no more proof we need that the world, the wide road, the walk with the world is inferior. The most, the highest uh, positioning in the world, it's inferior to walking with the Christ. 
which we have here in verse 9, Philippians 3, 9, and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith. In Christ, the righteousness, which is from Father, from God by faith, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. If by any means, very humble of Paul, if by any means I may be taken up with the Lord, resurrection so rejoicing in the Lord as Paul said in Philippians 3 1 rejoice in the Lord that's how he started and then he explained how you can rejoice in the Lord. Right? You take what those things that are gained to you and count them as loss for Christ. And uh, counting all things as rubbish, counting the uh, knowledge of the Christ Jesus as excellent. How many count the knowledge of the Lord Jesus as excellent? Excellent enough to suffer for. To suffer for his name's sake. And suffer the loss of all things. Considering it all is done. Now, every time I read Philippians, I can't help myself uh, but to read automatically out of Hebrew. I just, I just find they go beautifully together in Hebrews. And um, Hebrews 11, of course, the faith chapter, as they call it. Hebrews eleven twenty three, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three days by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. That's all it says. It doesn't say much about Moses' parents, does it, really? It doesn't even single out the dad just says parents and then it tells a bit of a story in the Old Testament about the mother putting him into the water in in the bark a bit of the cross there isn't it the, the bark off the tree hey Anyway, in verse 24, Hebrews 11, By faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And a lot of young people, what, what do they do when they come of age? They, 
of them refused to be uh, called a child of God. Like young people are raised up in the Lord, and then they they get um, this they get this bug in their head, and they think that the world is greater. That they think that Jesus is inferior to the world. <laughs> they come of age, and they don't want to really know about the Lord, do they? They just chase in the world and the things thereof. And it's very sad for them. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, he refused to be called the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. Well, something going on there with Moses, isn't there? He chose to suffer affliction. Verse 25, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. See? Choosing to suffer rather than pleasure. Tell you what, if pushing to find people like that today. Eh? This is the place we're at. This is the place we're at. It's, uh, people got no idea on first class living, picking up their cross each day, walking in the master's way. They got no idea whatsoever. So therefore, the devil has a free reign. And they choose the world. They choose the way of the world rather than the way of the Lord. And what happens? Ends up in misery, doesn't it? Always ends up in misery when we don't choose the Lord's way, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For we look to the reward. Right. So, Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. He knows there's a reward. Moses knew there was a, was a reward. We know there's a reward. We're told there's a reward. We're told that, that God keeps his promise. We're told that there is a heaven, there is a hell. The inferior way, the wide road, does not lead to heaven. But Moses looked to the reward. And then, it says in verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured, as seeing him who is invisible. That's, that was faith there. That's how he endured. He endured by faith. You don't see the invisible in the flesh. It's by faith. As, as seeing him. See, by faith, he didn't actually see him, but as seeing him who was invisible. As seeing him. Not fearing, better still. Uh, by faith he forsook Egypt, the 
it's verse 27. Not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing, as seeing him who is invisible. We need to have our, each of us, our own personal revelation and, and view by faith. Once you get your own view of Jesus and the Lord gives you your own view, it won't be anything extra biblical. It won't be outside the scriptures. It won't be mutilating the word of God. It won't be a dog's view. Hey? It won't be evil. It won't be violating the instructions of the Lord. It'll be something the Lord has given you. And no one can ever take it from you. And here we have Moses here. We have Brother Moses here, and he had his had his view, God given view. This is what kept him, and he accepted that. It was by faith he done that, and we have the same with. Uh, Brother Paul, the apostle, he, he gave him a view too, a view from a hill. No. Um, he gave him a view, and uh, he showed him that everything was like dung. It stunk, and it was messy. And, and loaded with problems. <laughs> it was just rubbish. And the Lord gave Paul that vision, gave him that view, that attitude that's far wiser and greater and far better dividends to suffer the loss of all things. And gain Christ. And be found uh, a brother of his. Hey. Not having his own righteousness. <clears throat> but but having the righteousness of Father through the blood of Jesus. Then there was a a, 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 um, a blessed assurance given to him and a, and a foretaste And that he, he would know Jesus and the power of his resurrection. You know that power of his resurrection, that's relating to the um, outworking of the cross. When we come to know the power of his resurrection, we come to know what he done, what he actually accomplished for us. All that's been accomplished, it's finished. So we don't have to start. When you get that word finished, we don't have, that means we don't have to start anything. We don't have to start some newfangled way of being delivered. Because it's finished. 
the Lord finished it. It is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There'll be no more war between you and God. It's finished. Right? And because of what Jesus done at the tree, we can know him. We can know that his the the power that he's made available to us through through his death, burial, and resurrection. Well, here it's talking the power of his resurrection. Okay. This is part of the outworking. To know him is part of the outworking of the cross. Power of his resurrection, part of the outworking. Fellowshipping with him, the fellowship of his suffering, that would be um, not so nice. And also being conformed to his death. This is all part of the outworking. There's no way in the world we would be able to partake of that. Without Jesus shed blood, and unless Jesus did what he did, it'd be all shut up. No one would even have opportunity to have their own personalised cross to carry. <laughs> hmm? No one would have their own personalised uh, road of pain and suffering and power. So we've got, we got the mix, we've got the whole lot there all culminating into a um, the making of a wonderful being a saint so any thought of some bloke in a gown sitting in a palace-like cathedral in Rome declaring, oh yeah, I'll let you be a saint. Oh yeah, we'll let that one be a saint. That's just wash. That's hogwash. Any God can do this. Only, only God can make you a saint. You can't do it yourself. God can't do it unless you are willing. Religion can't do it. We've seen here, we've seen what Paul said to the Philippians. Right? Anyone thinks he has confidence in the flesh, he said, I got more. I have more reason to have confidence in the flesh because. Uh, I've done everything to the book. Everything according to Judaism. Circumcised the eighth day, stock of Israel, tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew, Hebrew, Pharisee, persecuting the church. He'd done it all. But it still all amounted to nothing. It just amounted to zero. And there's a lot of religious people out there and they've done a lot of things, but it amounts to nothing. Is what we're doing amounting to anything in heavenly uh, calculations? 
in in heavenly um, light? That's the question. Is it amounting to anything in God's eyes? Or is it just vanity of vanity? That's all Paul was saying, the same as Solomon, wouldn't he? Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. The preacher said, eh? What's a man get for all his labour under the sun? <laughs> oh dear. Eh? All that slogging away. What's it amount to? No. Paul counted it all as dung. He counted it all as rubbish. So he could know Christ. And the Lord knows if, if if we're trying to play the field, so to speak. If we're trying to play the field, hang on to our old life, and then hang on to Jesus. That can never be. Unless we give up our life, we will lose it. Unless we pick up our cross. Right? And we have our individual, personalised, tailor-made cross. Fits snugly into the shoulder. And it's a beautiful fit. But it doesn't taste good. Eh? Chastening of the Lord is, is, is grievous. Hey? Chastening of the Lord is grievous. But it will eventually yield. Fruit. The peaceable fruit of righteousness. See the peace that, that comes with being in right standing with God. It's considered as fruit. Peaceable fruit of righteousness. There's peace in, in righteousness. And, and there's unrest in lawlessness. You're not at peace within and you're not at peace with God. A pivot. And I want that chastening in Hebrews twelve eleven <coughs> says Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the piece of a fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. No one wants the painful. Eh? No one wants the painful. So they basically end up born again bastards. And I had a bloke say recently that He 
can't, can't be a child of God and a bastard. But the scriptures say you can. In Hebrews 12, uh, verse 7, it says, If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate, see? And not sons, you're a bastard. If you are without chastening. So you've got two lots of people here. You've got those who, who haven't come to the Lord and they're bastards because they don't have a father in heaven. And then you've got those who come to the Lord, but they don't want, they don't want the chastening. Huh? The Lord goes on to say in verse uh, 9, Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. See? A lot of people on the wide road, and they pay their dad's respect and all that. But not God. Because it says, as we read on in verse 9, human fathers who correct us, and we pay them respect. Shall we, shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us, as seemed best to them. But he, for our profit, that we may partake of his holiness. You know there's people that come to the Lord and they don't want to partake of his holiness. They just continue on in their sin. They just do what they want to do. But they come to the Lord, they're thinking they're, they're making their claims. Eh? They're, they're making their claim and hypothetically getting their piece of paper for their block of land in heaven. <laughs> I said a prayer. I was water baptised. I bought a Bible. I go to church every Saturday. I go to church every Sunday. I've staked my claim. I got my piece of paper. God has to let me in. But I'm, I don't want his chastening because I'm a born-again bastard. Hello? But they say, oh, no, no. We don't want to be people who are supporting error and, and supporting the devil and supporting the um, mutilation of the doctrine of the Christ. We don't want to be part and parcel with them. That's for sure. All discipline's inferior to the discipline of the Lord. Even a natural army discipline. I've been in a natural army and now I'm in a spiritual army. And I know which is the toughest. I know which is the most difficult, painful. And it's the army of the Lord. He requires so much more from humans than natural armies, I can tell you now. Hey? So here's Paul making it very clear. It's all for Christ. Locking into the outworking of the cross by faith. 
I know him. I know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. So suffering with him. That's just beyond the mind, isn't it? How can that be? Is it possible? We suffer with him. To have that fellowship with his suffering. I mean, that event happened so long ago. It just takes us back to faith and the spiritual, doesn't it? It's a spiritual walk. We partake of it. And the scripture, let me say, I'm going to go over to Isaiah. And the scriptures make it clear what we're in for. Go to Isaiah chapter 53. Where it says, very clearly, starting in verse 3, was I 53 3? He is despised, rejected by men, man of sorrows acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we did not esteem him see that's what you're in for being despised being rejected a person of sorrow Acquainted with grief. Right? Sorrow and grief. Where he's only two friends. People hiding their face from him. And not being esteemed. See? When we... When we partake of the fellowship of his suffering. Fellowship of his sufferings. Not suffering because you're a ding-dong. A lot of people suffer because they're, they're dumb and dumber. But it's his sufferings. Right? And... Uh, Hebrews makes that even clearer, doesn't it? If we go to Hebrews 13 and verse 13. Therefore let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. See? Going forth to him outside the camp. Bearing his reproach outside the gate without the camp. Bearing his reproach, not something we brought on ourselves through stupidity. So we're partaking with him. That's what happens. I, I understand. It seems hard to grasp from many people that we could we could now suffer with him thousands of years later. But as I said, this is the mystery and the power of the Word of God and God Himself.
This is the awesomeness of, of, of the Holy Bible. That if we do what the Lord says, we're going to taste it. <laughs> we're going to taste it. And I tell you, it will change you. change your whole attitude and you'll eventually say if you have been trained by him and you know him and you've been taught by him you will say as Paul did the apostle it's all done the whole lot is done and then you will say as Moses said I refuse point blank to be associated with that kind of person. The filthy rich Pharaoh, stinky rich. I refuse. He refused. Hey? To be called the Pharaoh's son. What a golden opportunity for many to boast. Oh, who's your dad? Oh, he's the Pharaoh. What? Oh, special treatment for him. Huh? Oh. Billy, who's your dad? I, my dad is a, a trillionaire electrical giant. He's got companies all over the world. Oh, come this way, Billy. You come and sit down over here. And who's that one behind you? Oh, that's Fred. Fred? Yeah. He's on the doll, his, his old man's on the doll too. I'll leave him out there. <laughs> Just shut the door, please. But Moses refused to have any connection with the Pharaoh. To be even named with him. He did not want to be called the son. Moses considered the Pharaoh inferior. <laughs> inferior to being a suffering servant of the Christ. Okay. No comparison. As it says, we go right back to Hebrews here. in the faith, chapter Hebrews 11. <sighs> 24, by faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ, Greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. The reproach of Christ. The suffering. Hey. Pain. And here we use Moses talking about Christ. Back, way back. See how blessed he was. That he would know about the, the reward then. The suffering of Christ. He'd rather partake, see. And be part and parcel with that. Knowing that the, the end 
with a great reward. Moses knew he had it all. We got Father and Son and Holy Ghost, angels and brethren and the Word of God. We got it all. Let's press on. We got a great cloud of witnesses waiting out there to meet us in heaven and say, Amen. We got it all. Let's press on. Don't be dismayed. Don't be down. Because we're fighting this fight. For a crown that will not perish. Nor grow old. Great cloud of witnesses. Waiting out there. <laughs> We got it all, brethren. We're not inferior. The world is inferior to us, to, to our position as kings and priests. We don't want to get bogged down with this false humility and religions of men say, oh, I'm nothing, you know, I'm nobody. That's just religion. I'm a king and a priest unto God. That's the bottom line. Simple as that. Through Jesus' blood. All this garbage. I'm nothing. I'm nobody. So Jesus died on the cross and went through horrific pain. He was tortured and crucified and buried and rose from the dead so you could be a nothing. A nobody. <laughs> See, religion, self-imposed religion, false humility. Huh? It stinks. It's all got this Francis the Sissy thing about it, hasn't it? Francis of Assisi. He wasn't a saint, according to scripture anyway. Anything praised by the Roman Catholics, you can just give it a big miss. Just forget about it, totally. Huh? So, Paul traded the inferior for the superior. And that's what we need to do. That's what everyone needs to do. Then you won't be living a life of misery. Try the inferior for the superior. Right? And, uh, That's when things come alive, right? That's when things start to buzz and hum and the joy bells are ringing. When we trade it in, we give up our old rotten garments of sin, filthy sin-stained garments and say I've had enough I'm going to surrender Lord now right now that's what needs to be said if it's said with all your heart soul, strength and mind, the Lord will hear and he'll deal with it. Okay? But this is what Paul done before. Uh, he locked into the outworking. He got rid of all that other rubbish.
creating his own righteousness. from his white knuckle efforts. No, no, by phone. That sort of says to me, keep yourself busy till I come. <laughs> I'm this white knuckle. I'm, I'm doing this, you know. I'm doing that. I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm so busy, I'm doing, and you're busy in yourself for nothing. That's what the world does. The, the, the devil's got them hoodwinked. They think because they run ragged and ragdolled, working around the clock, keeping their mind off uh, the, the devil's keeping their mind off their sinful position, their hell-bound position at present. He's got their minds churning over. They've got no time to think. And he's got them thinking everything's good. <laughs> it's all good to go. But it's not. Okay? It's flaming vengeance. of God's awaiting them because they don't know him and the other mob don't obey him and God don't expect people to obey him who don't know him. That would not be love and that would not be righteousness and that would not be justice. And God operates in judgment, righteousness and love and kindness. He don't expect people to do what he says and they don't even know him. So, to Thessalonians chapter 1 and verses 8 and 9 talk about those who never took the time to go in to know him and people who knew him and did not obey the gospel of Jesus, his son. He don't love them because they don't obey his son. but only flaming vengeance awaits them and they're oblivious to it because they're told by ratbag, uh, heretic religious people, you don't have to do anything. That's the, the, the only uh, uh, knowledge they have of grace. Sitting on your hands. You don't have to obey, you don't have to repent. You, you don't even uh, have to mention his name. <laughs> you just be that secret sinner saint all the way to hell. No. I want the superior, not the inferior. Sorry. I want some garbage teaching of man. I want the teaching of Christ, as I always wanted, and the Lord knew that, and he gave it to me. Right? He gave it to me. Right? I don't want some trumped up garbage that can't deliver, make wise or so. Ephesians 4 says, uh, verse 17, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the world walk, or the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind. See? The world out there right now, and they were very foolish in the futility. That's how they walk. In in the stupidity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. 
because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who then pass feelings, that's well gone, feelings, who being past feelings, having given themselves, given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. That's, that's the world. That's the inferior life, see? But verse 20 says, But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Christ. See that last bit? It's nowhere else. As the truth is, let me expound on that, that the truth is only in Christ. Verse 22, Ephesians 4, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, who grows corrupt according to deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. You put on the new man who is righteous and holy. And created according to God. Righteous and holy. That's the new man. That's who we must put on. We must put on the righteous and the holy. He didn't say putting on the reds. Hey. Or the sayos or the jants. No, not putting on the rids, but putting on the righteous and the holy. Now, he's telling us here to do that. This is not a, uh, optional. It's not optional. Otherwise, it's just going to be uh, we're just walking like the Gentiles, aren't we? Walking like the world. Walk like an Egyptian. Dun, 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 dun. We're not walking like Egyptians anymore. We're walking in the light of his word day after day. We're not inferior. We're not all bogged down. Oh, I'm just, you know, I'm just. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I'm so little old me, so humble, you know. I'm just like Alcoholics Anonymous. I just keep saying, I'm an alcoholic. My name's Bill Brown. I'm an alcoholic. I'm... I'm I'm a defeatist. Let me slap myself down again. Yeah, well, I'm just a sinner, saved by grace. I'm a nobody. We're all nobodies. No, we're not, you ugly thing. That's not what the scripture is saying. Hey? Jesus told me I'm a king and a priest. Jesus told me I'm his brother. Are you calling him a nobody? Jesus ain't no nobody. <laughs> ah, well. I'm just a... just a jester. You know? I'm just a court jester. I'm just a gesture of the... suggester. Satan. No. King and a priest unto God. 
child of the Most High God, brother and friend and child of the Creator. Like, hello, this is not positive thinking. This is, I'm not talking negative thinking. I'm talking faint. This is the word. This is what the word says. It doesn't say, oh, he's just a sinner saved by grace. You know? And grace, she allows me to keep sinning because she's a really good tea lady. She makes a good cup of tea. What's her last name? Uh, Baptist. Grace Baptist. Oh. So she really encourages you. Oh, yeah. She just concretes it every Sunday. How are you, sinner, saved by grace? You going all right, nobody? <laughs> Uh, look, I tell you, I'm just about due for a cup of tea. So let's rejoice. Eh? As Paul said, let's take his advice and rejoice in the outworking and count it all done so that we can partake of the outworking of the cross and the victory. Power of his resurrection, fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, knowing him personally. Right? I'll finish by saying in Ephesians 4, 20, but you have not so learned Christ if you, indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is nowhere else in the entire world. Nowhere else except in Jesus. I give you all the glory, Jesus, because you're so wonderful. You have not given us the inferior. You've given us the superior. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you, Jesus.